We are united here by the will of providence. Something happened. And today we have the honor to consider the invitation that we can represent that we can represent our spiritual teacher that we can represent Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that we can represent purity kindness you see in this material world to have a certain representation it's considered prestigious. For example, if you want to be a representative of the government, you have to get elected. For that purpose, you have to make a lot of politics and a lot of propaganda. As a matter of fact, you have to invest money. So your representation is not so honorable. It's more or less a gamble. Because many people invest in a political career and they don't get elected. They lose the money. If you want to be a representative of a multinational company which is selling very expensive items, Usually they request you to be rich already. They make conditions. Oh yeah, if you can buy this much every, every year, then we, you can be our representative, otherwise not. So, any type of representation of something high, important, it takes so much effort, as a matter of fact, it it compromises the very principle of your life very often so we can understand that representing somebody important must be something important But if you want to represent the Supreme Personality of God and pure devotees, if you want to represent them, you don't have to bribe your way in. They inviting us to represent them. They have made it openly available that somebody can stand up and says, yes, I want to represent my spiritual teacher now. I want to represent Lord Chaitanya now. That is my highest ambition in life. Only representing Srila Prabhupada and representing Krishna gives actually value to my life. My personal sense gratification. My personal sense gratification is nothing. It has no value of any kind. Nor for me, nor for anybody else. That's why it's so nice to be a sannyasi. <laughs> because it is called civil suicide. You died for this world. <clears throat> for this world, you're nobody. For Krishna's world, you're a good guy. You're representing Krishna. But for your own personal pleasure, zero. 
don't agitate the senses. Just utilize them for Krishna. Hear about Krishna, speak about Krishna, smell Krishna, eat Krishna prasad, work your working senses only for service of Krishna. Always be with Krishna. That is the real price to pay, to go to Krishna. If you don't want to be with Krishna now, like if you go and have illicit sex, means you're going away from Krishna. If you take the money only for yourself, you go away from Krishna. If you take intoxication, you go away from Krishna. If you sleep all day and don't do anything, you go away from Krishna. We should be so busy that we have no time for doing anything. Krishna should keep us that busy that <coughs> so we should be so busy serving Krishna there's no space for Maya. Morning tonight. That's why as a devotee you should have on your to-do list many many things. And if you don't know what to do, run to the kitchen and help them. It's a lot of work always in the kitchen to feed everybody. Or go. Sometimes you get the service directly from the spiritual master. Sometimes you have an own idea. Sometimes uh, the other devotees need you. Always you should be busy. Keep your mind busy. Keep your hands busy. Keep your heart busy. The heart is the, the love part. So you have to love somebody. If you don't love others, then this is very difficult. Loving others is the mercy. So if you represent Krishna, then people will love you. Oh, you're representing Krishna. I always wanted to hear about Krishna. You mean you have anything to do with this Bhagavad Gita speaker, the Supreme Personality of God, who instructed his beloved Arjuna? You have something to do with him? I'm trying to become his devotee. Oh, then I love you. They love you because you serve Krishna. They're not loving you because you, you have fair hair or, or because you have a thin, lean body or because you have money. No, that's not love. But because you are connected with Krishna, somebody is saying, I'm giving a class on Shima Bhagavatam. Really? Can I come? Can I come? Yes, yes, very nice. Oh, this is so delightful. I mean, you give me the chance to speak about Krishna every day. You know what that means to me? It means to me, you made my day. You saved me. You give me chance to engage you in Krishna's service. That's the only thing I want. I want you to become so absorbed in Krishna's service, so absorbed that you feel the greatest joy of helping others. This is the touch of divine service. Let's do service. Doesn't matter how, when, where, but do service. Make our temples real places of shelter, real places of divine instruction, sadhana. Like sadhana is very important in spiritual life. The practice, that's why we have a yoga center in Puerto Rico called sadhana. Because this is our dear devotees, uh, two yoga centers, huh? sadhana, very important. Get up early to read the books, chant the kirtan, so many things are there in the sadhana. So spiritual life is a very practical thing and I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of your preaching in Terni every day in this preaching center. Sometimes with inbound yoga, sometimes with spoon revolution, sometimes with huida therapy, sometimes with vegetarian cooking, hmm? sometimes just by sitting with somebody and telling them about Vrindavan. There's many ways of preaching. It's not hard and fast rule. So many videos we can show, so many good things we have. So I'm very proud of you if you want to open such a place 
But don't forget, there is always three aspects. The meeting together, the committing together, and the living together. Meeting together is not enough. It's best, it's bet, it's the best thing because that's where it starts. But after you're meeting together, then you have to commit yourself together. Because somebody has a cell phone interfering. Huh? Turn off your cell phones. <laughs> it's right there. Huh? <laughs> Let's try this one. So, committing together is very, you know, it's very nice we meet together and then we want to eat together. After meeting comes eating, no? No. After meeting comes committing. And then after you made hard service, turn your cell phone off. We never had that problem. So, <clears throat> committing to a goal. What is our goal? What we are trying to accomplish? You think we have nothing to accomplish? I think we do. We are not living to eat. We are eating to live and serve. So, eating comes. It may come even in the beginning. But after sadhana. First sadhana. Srila Prabhupada used to say, first work, then samadhi. Then comes the samadhi. Where is Bhagavati? See? So, in other words, it's very important to to follow this principle of engaging fully and giving your full capacity to Krishna, your intelligence to Krishna, your, your understanding that you're living by His grace. That makes life really something valuable. What am I representing? Hey, I'm representing Mother Earth. Why? Well, because I'm a son of Mother Earth, I'm eating the food for Mother Earth, everything I'm getting from Mother Earth, so what you want? I'm a representative of Mother Earth. I'm also a representative of the sun, because the sun gives life to me, and I am a testimony, like if, in case you are blind, I can tell you, oh, you should imagine this sun which is giving light and warmth to the entire universe. One sky, let's say a huge uh, ship of divine glow which emanates and gives life to an entire creation, to an entire world. <coughs> Not only this, it's so nice that this planet is always turning, so it gets sunlight on both sides, no? If the planet would be floating, just one way, one life may be, one side may get life and the other will die. Or maybe everything dead because too much sun. <laughs> so Krishna makes everything. He puts the sun there, then he puts the earth there, and he goes, now it moves, no? Then he puts the, the moon there, you come over to this side, so at night we get a little light for that thing there, no? And then, uh, then he says, now let's put the water there that they can live. Now the sun, your rays come here, you evaporate that water, then by the movement you get a little wind, then the clouds take it everywhere, so we can have the whole set up. I mean, it's Brahma who did that, you know? The great engineer of the universe is Brahma, really. But you see, so I'm a representative of that. Why? Because I'm the sun. 
I'm a son and you are also a son, so you can be also be representative. But you have to assume it. You have to commit to it. So, meeting, committing, and then eating. No. Eating is not the subject. The next thing is mandir. The next thing is working together for a goal and giving shelter to others. <coughs> that is really the most intensive part of spiritual life. It's one thing, I'm giving a class. Okay, I hope you like my words. Bye bye. See you later, maybe. No, 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 no. This is nothing. Anybody can deliver a speech. But after the speech comes the question, what's going on in Cartagena? Are you going to be my representative in Cartagena or not? Are you going to give shelter to people there or not? <coughs> What will happen in the Seva in Colombia? Are we going to make those books and push them out everywhere or not? What books are we going to produce? Are they going to be full of mistakes or are they going to be perfect? How are we going to receive these people when they come? Are we going to make them feel at home? <coughs> or are you going to just ignore them? Or you're just interested in getting something, but you're not ready to give. Shelter giving, family, ashraya. <coughs> that is the top. And it does not mean that you have to live in the temple. You can be part of the ashraya giving and getting, living outside the temple. It's quite possible, but living inside the temple, it becomes your obligation. You have to be the friend of all, like Prabhupada. Can you imagine? Bill Wan, the friend of all. We know Prabhupada, the friend of all. Vaishnava Das, the friend of all. Well, with that name, he better be the friend of all, no? Rati, the friend of all. Is that what you're going to do there? Garuja, Prema Kumari, the friend of all, giving shelter to people, guiding people properly, living for them, sacrificing for them, just like a doctor. If a doctor denies, denies treatment to a sick person because the sick person doesn't have money, then that doctor loses the right to exercise his profession. <laughs> oh, you learned medicine just for getting money? Oh, then you're not a doctor. So this is principle of doctorship, isn't it? You make that promise, I will always help people with the science. I would save lives whenever I can. So, commitment. A doctor has a commitment, a fireman has commitment. A fireman cannot say, oh, I'm so tired, let this fire burn. Uh, I'll go there tomorrow when I'm awake. No! The fireman! Get up! And run! Fireman cannot go. <laughs> like Brahmachari going for service. <laughs> <laughs> that sometimes we <laughs> we get discontrolled. Uh, no, fireman has to run and do hard work anytime when it's necessary. So are we not firemen? Sam Saradava Nalalida Loka Tanayaka Dunyaga Naganatyam. We are supposed to extinguish the forest fire of material existence. That's what the sadhu is supposed to do. He always running around with a fire hose, with a big water, you know, and there's a, there's a fire. Every time 
When you go in Sankitan, we go with a big hose. Okay, come here. May I? <laughs> what you're doing? Just extinguishing the fire of material existence. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the, what the service of a devotee is. He should always extinguish the fire of material existence in everybody. So, but that to do that in the street is one thing, but <coughs> don't forget that in the temple we need this extinguish the fire of material existence. Don't think because he's living in the temple, he's already out of the fire. The fire is already disappeared. No! So Ashraya, giving Ashraya or giving support to those who give Ashraya. This is the top importance of spiritual life. That's where spiritual life really starts. And I admit to you, living in temples is difficult. One time I was in a meeting, there was one of my god brothers from New York, and he said, Swamiji, the life in the temple, that's over. That's a hist it's a part of the past. Nowadays it's very difficult to live in temples. And he was giving some argument. Some temples have very few brahmacharis. And, 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 and. So I think it's over. This time must be different. Then I asked, everybody was sitting in the room, maybe 20 people, how did you join Krishna Consciousness? In this ashram, in that ashram, in that ashram, in that ashram, in that ashram. Everybody in the room joined into some ashram. So I said, so you want to finish that? We all we go come to Krishna Consciousness through an ashram. Let's try it. You joined an ashram? 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 No? <laughs> but you're going every day. <laughs> hmm? Did you join an ashram? Did you join an ashram? Did you join an ashram? Well, you see, everybody joined an ashram. That's ashraya. You give shelter to somebody. You allow him to come in and you provide him with harikata and with, with prasadam and with spiritual consciousness. No ashram, no preaching, no life. Everything is done, everything is ended. And where will your children go? And where will the preachers go? So in other words, ashraya is the most important thing. And ashraya, who is ashraya? Who is Ashraya Vigraha? Who is the personification of shelter giving? Sri Mati Radharani. That is her name. She is the shelter giver. Why Vindavan has so many temples, so many ashrams? Yes, many are guest houses. They are just for the pilgrims when they come in, in the big festival days. Because many people come. So we don't have millions of people living here all the time. Because people have to do other things. But then they have to have an ashram in their city. Everywhere in the world we need ashrams. By the ashrams we can live. By the ashrams we can expand Krishna consciousness. So I'm so grateful to all of you who have helped me to maintain the ashrams open. Sometimes the ashrams are very small. Sometimes it's only one flat. We have started in Colombia. We have now, I don't even know how many temples we have. I have not counted in a long time. But it started all in a garage. In a garage rented for $50 with one bathroom. Sometimes garages have bathrooms, usually not. But that garage had a little bathroom and the devotees rented that in Chapinero in Colombia. And that's where the Krishna consciousness started in that city. And now you have devotees everywhere, restaurants and farms and this and you. You don't, you don't know where to go. There's devotees everywhere. So, started in a garage. <coughs> and who joined that garage? Srila Bhakti Bhimala Hari Jamaj, he joined in that garage. You should have seen the temple which I joined. That was unbelievable. It was so horrible. It was on the fifth floor under the roof tiles in a broken building which the government had declared unlivable. And they had cut off the water and the light. 
And then the, the hippies, they broke the lock and they occupied, there were like 20 apartments in that building. And the devotees were at the top of them, there was nothing, there was not, only like a little, like I tell you, under the tiles directly. Huh? And then if you wanted to take a shower, you had to go five floors in the backyard, there was a tap. Ice cold water, no warm showers in Germany, my dear. Ice cold water, that's what we got there. And still the devotees were joining, took shelter. We lived there sometimes with six, seven people in this one room, temple room and one brahmachari room. That was the temple. Because when you want to take shelter, you don't care whether it's a garage or whether it's this or well, our Mataji ashram in, in Gornitai. It's, it's, you can't even stand up inside. You have to go like this. And it's only like five meters long and three meters wide. And sometimes how many ladies are there? Twelve? Huh? 20. <laughs> uh, up to 20 people live there. Then we give one more little room, but the, the temple is small, there's no space. So this is how Krishna conscious spreads, by austerity, by giving shelter, by opening your heart, by making sure that people feel, hey, I am welcome here. This is a home. Welcome home. And Vinda Kunja, I'm so happy now. It's so full, we have no more rooms. We have to tell to people, please get a room next to us because we just don't have space. But of course, it's because people cannot tolerate. Otherwise, you can stay with me in my room there. We are still two places open. So, <coughs> we believe in that. That you share everything. Krishna consciousness means sharing. <laughs> If you share what Krishna has given to you, then Krishna is pleased, then Krishna will give you more facility, everything will come, everything fall into place. But this is a sacrifice. You have to do it through, you have to do it through sacrifice. It, it will not happen by, uh, by any automatic function. It, it, there is something you have to uh, actually make the decision. I will have an ashram now. Here's the ashram, and this is working under ashram principle. Now, don't think ashram is just anything. First thing in an ashram is there's a bank account. And whose bank account is this? This is Krishna's bank account. First thing, first thing. You don't have Krishna's bank account, you don't have Krishna's movement there. Uh, maybe you are managing the bank account with the help of the other donors, but maybe it's even in your name, but still it's Krishna's bank account. And you can do with this money what you want. You have to do with this money what Krishna wants. And you say, this is Krishna's money, how to use it? Otherwise, if Krishna doesn't have a bank account, everything comes from your pocket. It doesn't work that way. Sorry. There's no shelter in such a place. The place. Nobody wants to join a company. Nobody wants to join even, even a private home. We want to join an ashram. An ashram is where there's conjointly we are sacrificing <coughs> and conjointly we are organizing how to please Krishna there. And that is what I say representation. If you are in an ashram, you are the representative of such a spirit. Oh, then you have a very elevated position. In India they call that Mahant. Maha, great. Uh, Mahant. Somebody who is actually making sure whatever donation comes in here is spent for Krishna. If not, of course we also have in India some private uh, private guruship where everything goes through the guru. Well, if you trust him, then it's fine. If he spends everything for Krishna, but basically like Sevite ship, it means there must be a board of directors. Even big temples, they all have boards of directors and it's not one man alone who decides everything. Why? Because you know there's opportunity makes the thief. If a person has the opportunity to steal, this is 
is very tempting. So therefore, there should not be opportunities to steal Krishna's donation box. The hundi. Huh? The danpatra. You know the danpatra in the temple. When you go to a temple, there's a little box. You put a donation and there's a chain. Because because many times the thieves can't go and take the whole danpatra. <laughs> huh? So we want to be sure if I give something to Krishna, it's used for Krishna. Then we are happy. And then we get inspired. Because our devotees, our devotees, they really want to do many things for Krishna. And we have so much responsibility. Printing many books, then distributing the books. We are reproducing so many valuable items. I'll give you an example. One of my friends, his name, name is Pralat. He's a professional musician in Canada. When he makes a CD, for making one CD of his production, he spends $15,000. It's a lot of money and a lot of time and the recording studios and the sound engineers and all this. It costs money. It builds up 15,000. Some, some productions, I mean, like the same movies, some movies are produced with $10 million. So it's nothing strange, $15,000. In our Vrinda mission, with all the love and all the cooperation of the sound engineers, everything, we have produced hundreds of products in the seva of wonderful music of any style for Krishna. DVDs, movies, all the things just for awakening Krishna consciousness in the people. And how much we sell them for? <coughs> we are selling them for almost cost price. Quanto vale? Un DVD in the seva. So we are we are producing at seventy five cents a DVD or CD. That's the actual cost, seventy five cents, and we're selling it for one dollar. Just twenty five, just to keep the rent paying on the things like that. Twenty five cents. That's the generosity of the devotees. Why? Because we are going out in the street and we are selling these items to poor people. If I put the same thing like a Madonna or something like this, $25 in the shop, no, and nobody will buy these things. The people don't have this money. The poor people, maybe some rich people, you can sell a few in a, in a record store to the, in the, in the, in the upper upper area of town but if you go to the people in the poor area so the devotees do all this they produce with love and tears and sweat they reproduce simple humble and they sell for almost nothing and what's the reaction people are becoming devotees people appreciate that they say oh you do all this that is family because we see Sarve Shukino Bhavantu for us, for us Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The whole world is one family. <coughs> for us, the people in the street, they belong to our family just like you who are living inside the ashram. We are one big family and we have to take care for the welfare of all. Not that oh these people I want to make profit with them. I mean Profit is not prohibited. Everywhere there is some type of profit going on. Without profit you cannot pay your bills. But it has to be decent. That's what we call in the, in the world of ecology, we call that fair trade. It has to be fair. Fair for everybody. Like China is not fair trade. China is the trade of <coughs> producing everything the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest way at any cost. And what's the cost? 
you actually have to go to China and look at the production facilities. You have to look at the human conditions of those who are making sure China produces the cheapest. And you will be scared. Already China is known to be the country, the most polluted country in the whole world. In other words, they produce but they don't protect. They just produce without taking care of the environment and then it gets... So you can keep a cheap price, <coughs> but at what price? Destroy destruction. So I could give you many other examples like this. <coughs> so fair trade, that is a part of fairness. If you want to work with people, they should be fair. They should not be abused. So devotees, they are fair trade people. More than fair. You could call it loving trade. I think that's the next thing we should start in. Love trade. But that will be misunderstood. Uh, <laughs> uh, but fair trade means loving fair trade. Because why should I not love the people in Bangladesh who are making my garments? You remember last year this whole thing collapsed. One of those assembly signs, it was so badly constructed and 500 workers died when the thing collapsed because they just like pushed in there put another machine put another one just like everybody's working like this and then those so many people died and everybody thinks so my garment which comes from bangladesh or from china is not fair trade so it's not good if you're participating in something which is not fair trade you also you also get in karma <laughs> There's karma in everything. Anyhow, the devotees, they are the loving fair trade partners. They do everything. We don't even like the richie style of business. We don't even like it. The five-star <coughs> hotels and the, uh, and the $100 restaurant where you pay $100, zip wine and eat uh, frog legs. Huh? We don't like that. We want a nice samosa, a nice tally of healthy food, prashadam, eat it and get out and work. No, we want fair, healthy things. So this is, so the, because devotees are from the department of simple living, high thinking. We are not from this all. I got the fancy. Hmm? I, I, my dresses are made by a fancy dressmaker. In every level they have products for the ego. So you can buy a car and then you can send it to the turbo uh, maker. They will take your car and do a few things on the motor and then you pay another few thousand dollars and now I have a turbo Toyota. Huh? It means nothing. Just says turbo in the backside and your ego floats a little higher. Hmm? Everything in this world has this ego thing. I'm better than you because look what I have. <laughs> you know how much I paid for that. I don't care. You know that there's watches, you can get watches for two dollars and you can get a watch for 13 million dollars. Which one you prefer? Hmm? You know, it's the place, this material world is a place of madness. And if you really believe in the essence in Krishna, then you know this is simple country life. We believe in trees and clean water and in humble, beautiful, loving relationships. When you go to Vindavan, when you go to Braj, there's something called Madhukari. You simply go, no money in your pocket, and you chant, and they come here, take a roti, a little sabji, please. The, all the bridge buses, this is their culture. They give madukari to anybody who is walking and praying. Oh, you're praying? You're a good man? You're looking for God? 
take your chapati with some sabji. That's culture. Now it's getting lost. Because the farmers are poor and have problems with the, with the, uh, with the government to survive. And the pilgrims come with uh, the latest high-tech uh, cameras and everything. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's a distorted situation, you know. The pilgrims don't come like beggars of love. Actually, what this song was all about, how to become a beggar of love. Krishna Muradi, Sri Krishna Muradi. So, <clears throat> what I'm telling you is the real message of today. Please, get your show together. Make sure you work hard for Krishna and have no time for being invited. And always be fair and loving with all and give chance to others that they can live in a spiritual environment. Those who have money, if they are lucky, they create environments where people can take shelter of. <laughs> Usually it doesn't happen that way. Usually it happens by some poor people going out and begging and renting a place and opening the door to others. But it doesn't matter how it happens. It matters that it exists. And when you find an ashram, there has to be somebody who loves the people and welcomes them. What's the use of a, of a house if there's nobody there? <coughs> What's the use if there's nobody who feels happy if others come? <coughs> like here we are happy you're coming. Very happy. This is really our, our greatest fortune here. That you have come from so far. So far. Why you have come here? For Krishna? You didn't come here to sell anything? No? You didn't come here to... Because it's the best food in the world. You can have prasadam in your places also where you are. You don't have to come here. As a matter of fact, South America has the best fruits in the world. You cannot compare it. I mean, India is is good, it has quite a few frill fruits, but South America, you cannot even count how many fruits you have there. In Puerto Rico, I have one friend, his name is Govardhan, he has 600, 600 different fruit trees, of which 350 are producing fruit, different fruits. <laughs> We come here for something else. We are coming here for the sacrifice of Prabhupada for Krishna. The sacrifice for others, made by those who love others. We are coming here because we are love thirsty and we are going after the loving people who, who live for love. Live for love and love to live. That's what we're coming here for. We heard, because we heard that this little Krishna boy is really loving all. He invited the whole world to dance with him. And he is opening different <coughs> representation centers of Vrindavan around the world. Even in Puerto Rico we have a Vrindakunj. This is Vrindakunja here. This is Rajavasi's farm. It's called Vrindakunja. So we have an expansion from Vrindakunja in the mountains of Puerto Rico. Like this. And we want to create the spirit of love. Now, you may, you may consider one thing. It is called occupational therapy you may think oh Krishna consciousness is occupational therapy you occupy yourself in the right thing in this way you get cured of something but the answer is no 
Only apparently it is an occupational therapy. Because really, it is a love therapy. <laughs> it's all about love, love, love. You're looking for love, Krishna's looking for love, therefore Krishna's looking for you. <coughs> and you have to love everybody else, otherwise Krishna doesn't believe in your love. So you have to love others, you have to serve others, you have to bring them to Krishna's love. Then we all will love each other and go to the world of love. Or you remain in this world. And this is not the world of love. This is the world of lust, greed, harshness. It's not a very gentle place. Not at all. And it's not extreme. It's not exaggerated. Like maybe you have seen <coughs> The movie Slumdog Millionaire became quite famous around the world. So you see something horrible in this movie. Horrible. How the criminal people blind children to send them to beg for them. This is one of the themes of that movement. <coughs> movie. What a horrible idea take a child to make it blind and send it out to bed because he had a nice voice so and you may say oh is it really happening can you see that here in Vrindavan do you see blind kids begging well it's not very common at least it may have happened but what I'm talking about is what's happening in every home. Not in every home. Everywhere people are starting to eat meat, even in India. What to speak of the rest of the world. And so many people are starting to take intoxication. And so many people treat their wives very badly. Again, India has a better better background it's not that bad yet but when I came to India there was hardly any divorce today divorce has become a very common subject right Nitin is it right Nitin <laughs> now divorce has become a common thing in India Divorce, husband and wife separating. <coughs> you didn't understand. Uh, in Delhi, happening every day. So, this is the modernized style. But the, the material world is not a nice place. I tell you, it's not a nice place. If you're lucky and you're not suffering very much yourself, you're good karma. But this world is not a nice place. <coughs> this is not the world of love. But this is the world where you can learn that you need love and that Krishna wants your love. And if you don't give your love to Krishna, well then you're also not getting Krishna in that proportion which he would like to give it to you. So that's why this is a place of Radhe, 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 because Radhe is the goddess of love. She's so loving that God, Krishna himself, finished. When he get the love of Radha, then Krishna is completely 